welcome to the Aerodynamics uh, Podcast. My name is Mike, and today we have a very special guest. We have Associate Professor Luca Caricoglio. He is from Northeastern University, and he looks into um, thunderstorm downburst replications in wind tunnels. Thank you for being here, Luca. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to share some of the research that we've been doing in the last few years. Yeah. So I've come across a few of your papers. One of them, for example, is generation and characterization of a non-stationary flow field in a small scale wind tunnel using a multi-blade flow device. And the link is in the description, so you can uh, go to it from there. So this um, paper and some of your other papers, they look into replicating downbursts that are created from thunderstorms. Can you tell me what a downburst from a thunderstorm is? Yeah, a, th a thunderstorm is a, a, a slightly less known uh, phenomenon, like a wind phenomenon, whereby, similar to if you want a shower, when you take a shower, so there's a, there's a downdraft of air, which, uh, which is, uh, originates from a certain meteorological phenomenon. So there's actually, it's, it's, the, uh, it's essentially a, a, a pocket of cold air that then is drawn down, but also by the, the, the possibility of a, 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 a simultaneous updraft of, of a warmer air. So the problem is that this downdraft um, can cause uh, problems to a number of uh, uh, structures. So what the down the, what the so the first thing the downdraft does, uh, usually the downdraft is like a, a essentially a tube or or, a, or like a, a flow, and it's it's funny because this is usually the first one of the first exercises that you do when you study engineering and as in a, when you do fluid mechanics of hydraulics. One of the first problems you solve is the problem of a hose. Uh, impinging against a wall and then how the eventually the flow develops from there. So uh, what happens in a downdraft is the uh, the air uh, as the air hits the ground then it is uh, is uh, redistributed across the across the across the ground surface. The problem is that now uh, the the flow is no longer is not a uh, it becomes an unsteady flow and and uh, and the and therefore a uh, vortex or vortices uh, develop as the system is is uh, uh, is hitting the ground and this vortex or uh, is a, some sort of a, a ring structure so like a, like a donut eventually and so this donut structure then by essentially conservation of angular momentum uh, spreads out so the, the the radius of the donut over time increases and so the drum draft then increases over a, over a larger uh, air area or surface so what what are the characteristic of this of this say this uh, the, the say if you want to see the diameter of this kind of shower thing we are talking about one kilometer or so if you are looking at the at the, at the eventually the diameter more or less and so and then the the outer ring as the ring develops is about uh, is about uh, you know maybe one to two kilometers. So usually there's a ratio one to two. And why when is this a pro a problematic? The the main issue why downdraft or, or thunderstorm were studied is because of um, aviation problems. The uh, thunderstorm and downdrafts are very dangerous for for airplanes because as when the airplane is approaching the the, the runway uh, as the airplane lands. Uh, you have a sudden change in the essentially in the in the wind speed that can can essentially reduce if especially you are on the uh, if the airplane is hit from behind so you have a sudden increase in the in the wind speed that is then generates a, a, a in terms of relative velocity a loss in relative velocity so a loss of lift Yep. And so the airplane falls down, and so this problem became apparent, at least in the in the United States uh, of America, in the in the 70s. And uh, research started to to start characterizing the downdrafts for for airplane industry. And so this is something that is uh, has been known for more than 30, 40 years. In civil engineering, the problem uh, usually we uh, or for 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 structural uh, applications, we had a uh, we started looking at the problem maybe 20 years ago, because we started realizing that the the wind uh, or the wind phenomena that we were using to design structures 
uh, uh, were not only the standard uh, boundary layer or meteorological large uh, phenomena, like meteorological phenomena, but also these uh, type of phenomena can become uh, significant and can have an impact on, on structures, especially in the region, say, between zero and 60, 70 meters from the ground. And, and uh, one of the industries that has been impacted by downdrafts is the, the wind energy industry, because most wind turbines have their, their nacelle at that height. And so they, they suffer from, from this problem. So it's become a more and more um, a problem for a number of structures. And so research has started. This now is, is, is a mature field uh, of research, yet the, the, when, when it comes to codification, so tra transferring the knowledge to the, to the, to the des engineering design community, say the civil engineering design community, it becomes a little more, uh, more difficult still. So, and th there are very few, uh, there are still debate how things can, could be implemented in, the, um, uh, uh, in, in codes. So why is it more difficult to pass this knowledge on to the civil engineers? Uh, the, one of the reasons is that uh, capturing a downdraft is, is more difficult in the sense that the, the downdraft is, is a phenomenon that has a very short uh, life. Usually yeah. the downdraft lasts for say 20 minutes or so. And uh, what you need to do, you need to deploy an instrument or some sort of an instrument station that is capable of reproducing the wind field in such a short time with a very short notice because also you have to have some usually what the, the meteorologist does the meteorologist usually uh, uh, sends out a warning for a downdraft or downburst so the, the engineer or the, the the physicist should be ready with the equipment and going around trying to place it in the right spot and because the the this thunderstorm is usually limited in space it's uh, the, the number of uh, ex, uh, instruments is, is all is limited. So nowadays we have more, the instrumentation has become technologically more advanced. And so we are able to, uh, to measure uh, things. The second aspect is that um, uh, we, can, we can always place uh, wind monitors, say wind, uh, wind um, anemometers in, in, a, in a fixed position. And the, the question is that when you measure for say 20, 30 years, then the, 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 the issue is going to be how do you separate a standard wind from a non-standard wind? So uh, the wind that comes from a, 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 large, uh, a, a large meteorological phenomenon from something which is um, as much smaller and different, especially because usually these, uh, these anemometers are point-like measurements so usually to, in a, for, a, for you to be able to differentiate the two you may need first of all you may need maybe more than one point which is a more which is a, uh, sometimes impossible because there are some costs and and also because of the so the, there has been challenges and so europe actually has been on the forefront of uh, of this of this research because um a few, maybe around 10 years ago the European Union funded a project in the in the uh, on the northeast part of Italy and France, and uh, on the Tyrrhenian Sea, which is essentially from going from 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 Genoa the, up up to Nice, you know, basically. And so, what they were concerned uh, was the essentially that area is a windy area, and they were concerned about the the uh, the, the effect of of uh, winds coming from the sea on the, for example. The, uh, the, uh, the traffic uh, in ports. So as a, the byproduct of that research actually was the fact that they were able to capture several very good um, uh, data, like data samples of real uh, downdrafts or, or thunderstorms, which was, uh, which was uh, 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 so, and now there is a database, at least that database uh, for Europe. In other countries or in other continents, the same thing uh, has happened. Uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, for example, in Asia, in Australia, uh, people have uh, have um, uh, have done the same. And in the uh, here where I am in the United States, they have the same. Uh, we also are trying to use uh, similar technologies. And uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, uh, some researchers have done here in the state is try to, with the data that we have about uh, say a, a long term 
uh, the wind like monitoring, we there is a way that we can at least uh, uh, separate the, the the standard wind phenomenon from a downburst, or uh, so in this uh, mixed climate regions, and so try to then accommodate or try to essentially put them into beans. And so once we collect a sufficient number of of data. Uh, the sample is relatively large, then we can start analyzing the, the, the downburst from uh, like statistically. So to calculate what could be the maximum speed, uh, for example. So and, uh, could you explain the difference between a non-stationary wind event and a stationary wind event sure. in terms of the velocity sure. profile? Yeah, let me, uh, actually, let me, let me do one thing. If, you, if I can, yeah. uh, if I can do one thing, uh, so the the, the main uh, stationary is uh, something that has the where the uh, it's a basically if you look at uh, dyna uh, fluid dynamics is a flow the characteristics of which are are the same over time. So the time variable does not uh, does not uh, uh, come into into uh, uh, it become is not important or is less important. Which means that yes, there is turbulence uh, because some it's going to be turbulent, but the, ter the, the 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 characteristics of the turbulence are the same over time. Say the the the, the variations of turbulence over time is the same. So if you want to call it standard deviation about a, a mean is the is the same. So the mean value of the wind velocity more or less stays the same over uh, over time. Of course, nothing in in reality. Is uh, is uh, is really stationary. So stationary is just a. Uh, no, there's no stationary phenomenon. It's quasi static Every, almost. Everything is quasi static because even even a even a large uh, meteorological phenomenon has an evolution. So if you today there is wind, tomorrow there's no wind because the the phenomenon uh, uh, disappears. For example, and and so if uh, the so if your eye is has a very long horizon time horizon, then you can start seeing fluctuations. If your eye has a shorter horizon, then uh, you, can, you can essentially uh, see something that is uh, stationary over time. So, and uh, what is the right horizon for you to consider a, a large wind phenomenon to be stationary? This is usually between uh, 10 minutes to one hour. So there is that particular uh, spot in you know between uh, so if you if you stay for an hour and uh, if you consider one record of a standard wind for about uh, 10 minutes to an hour what you will see is that essentially the the a snapshot of your of your flow is uh, looks the same even if you're taking maybe smaller snapshot like over you know five minute or two minute period this is not the case in a, in a, in a, in a thunderstorm because the thunderstorm starts and, and essentially evolves and dies in, in 20 minutes. So it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a different, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a different, uh, it's a different phenomenon. So let me see. If I can, uh, and so, and what is the, what is the advantage of using stationary or quasi steady uh, approximation? It's much simpler. From the point of view of uh, the analyst, like the and the designer, because if you have something which is stationary, the the prob and and if you also make the assumption that maybe the the response you're trying to capture is still from the engineering point of view mostly linear, then you 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 have a a, a very a, the simpli there's a big simplification when you, you when you do the analysis, and so for for instance you don't have to simply replicate exactly over time the, the the evolution but you can actually uh, uh, use a spectrum which is essentially a, a snapshot uh, over the frequency axis that is uh, uh, average and then it it start, it's reproducing the average or uh, characteristic of this fashion stationary uh, phenomenon so with one uh, graph you are able to somehow predict everything if the things becomes non stationary then time becomes a problem so then you you're supposed to have maybe uh, records with some degree of fidelity of uh, over of this uh, time evolution uh, or or this uh, particular uh, situation of of uh, of the of the evolution over time and and so these are uh, these are the uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the problems that uh, 
downward stars. Let me see if I have something uh, for uh, for you to uh, for you to see. Okay, yes, actually I have that. So let me share my screen. So sure. since you asked the question, so <laughs> if you can, if you allow me to if you allow me to to show you my screen. Sure, I think you should be able to. Can you share it? No, host disable participant screen sharing. Okay, so that's what. Uh, okay, Maybe, you... oh, now, now, you, now I can. Okay, okay. so now, now actually this is a, what we, so this is a, okay, so you may see this, uh, uh, the, uh, so this is actually the, the, the if you want, the, the typical thunderstorm uh, right, phenomenon. Yeah. So you can see on the left side, there is a downburst cloud, which is now starting to develop the, the, the downflow. And, and this is a schematic of how the downflow evolves. So there is a touchdown. And, you, and as I was telling you earlier, the, 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 the sudden uh, the sudden uh, development of this ring type uh, flow that then is uh, is then going to uh, spread out over over time so there's a, of course not all the uh, the the clouds become downbursts so that's the first difficulty that we have because sometimes this downflow never reaches the ground and you can see this is the 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 temporal picture if you want of the impinging jet that mm -hmm. as the jet impinges against the ground. And you can see now T is the total time. And, uh, and, uh, and if you read the, 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 the graph here, this is T minus five minutes and T plus 10 minutes. So you can see that uh, more or less, this is the, 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 the time scale of about 20 minutes, which is very sudden. And also the, 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 uh, also the, the scale in terms of the geometric scale. So this is a, a few kilometers. Co compare this to a standard synoptic wind, which has hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. So it's much, it's much larger. So, yeah, and, 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 and this evolves over time and as a, as a, as, as a result of, of the, and, and this is a typical, you know, this is a typical uh, cross-sectional view of the thunderstorm where you can see this is the thunderstorm evolving uh, in at one point, essentially taking a, a, a cross section at the, at the, at the, in this particular in this particular uh, in this particular situation. And one of the things which is important in a thunderstorm is actually shown here. If you can see my my pointer yeah. here, this is the nose-like uh, vertical profile that a thunderstorm has, which is different from a, st a standard boundary layer, where the profile usually uh, increases because this is a, essentially a, a boundary layer problem. So it increases uh, progressively as we move away from the from the from the ground. And so these are the the uh, some of the some of the some of the issues. And so since you were uh, uh, and so, and this is actually the device that we use in the in the wind tunnel to to try replicating essentially this part of the of the thunderstorm. And so, what we are trying to do, we are actually trying to replicate the same downburst effect or the same impinging jet effect on a in a small scale wind tunnel. And so, we we came up with the idea of using a, of using basically a, a basculating system of of plates. That is uh, at the when the when the system is off, it allows the wind or the or the flow in the wind tunnel to uh, to pass through without any any obstacle, basically almost zero. And uh, all of and then all of a sudden, using a stepper motor, we change the the angle of the of the blades to to generate the the essentially the the impinging jet, and then we let the impinging jet hit a structure here. You can see this is a tall structure which is shown. Uh, which is shown in the in the in the example. So the, no, this is another application. So and and uh, uh, no, uh, yes. And so what you can see, this is maybe an interesting application. So this is uh, what we we try to do in the same wind tunnel. We have a hot wire probe, and this is the velocity field that we see. And the our objective is to try to replicate this particular shape. You can see this node-like shape. So I'm going to uh, run this uh, small. Uh, small uh, cartoon, and this is the velocity that we measure across the this vertical uh, inst uh, the, this vertical uh, support uh, using the using our hot wire. And you can see around 10 seconds that the wind is going to change, and uh, for a for a for a for a very small 
uh, instant, you can see that uh, there's uh, the nose develops and then disappears because uh, uh, we are also uh, trying to replicate in, in a wind tunnel the scale. Uh, at, uh, so the scale is much faster than the, than the standard scale. So 10 minutes for our for us in the uh, in the wind tunnel is a much shorter scale. It's probably 30 seconds. And and the and the and this uh, uh, and uh, there is one of the issues that the, the downburst has is that some, often the downburst is also accompanied by translating effect. So it does. It's not stationary. Also, it, the, this cone moves. And so the actual window of opportunity for you to be able to see this is no longer only 20 minutes, but it's may, maybe three, five minutes. And three, five minutes in the wind tunnel is perhaps less than, you know, a few seconds, less than a second. So this, this uh, up and down, up and down is very, uh, is very sudden, you know, like that we so do. How do you scale in the temporal um, domain? Because so, yeah, so the so the usually the te the the temporal domain we use dynamic similarity like Buckingham theorem we use the yeah. same so okay. we have to set up a velocity scale uh, and the velocity scale is based on uh, the underlying stationary velocity of the downburst which is say the maximum velocity possible that we have here and uh, and uh, and and then we have the the uh, is the um, uh, uh, the the geometric scale which is the geometric scale of the of the of the of the atom that we are going to test in the wind tunnel so for comparing these two then we can uh, we we come up with the with the, a, a with the with essentially the temporal scale that is uh, that is most uh, uh, appropriate the problem we have in our facility if you read uh, if i go back to the yeah this is the another example of a, another uh, so the, our facility is very small. So the model scale becomes very small. The velocity scale is also, uh, so the model scale is uh, say one to 700, which is very, very small compared to more, uh, say more uh, be, uh, wind tunnels that have more uh, better capabilities. Our velocity scale is, uh, is probably uh, one to 10, more or less one to seven, one to 10. And and so and then our time scale I, I will have to do the calculation but our time scale is very short. What I can tell you is that physically we are we are looking at a few seconds uh, that uh, represent maybe uh, so a few minutes. So you know perhaps you know uh, 100 second becomes three seconds. So you can see this is more or less the more or less the the the, the time scale that we are using. Is the so, benefit of that that you can then do more experiments in the same Correct. amount of time. The, the, bene the benefit of that is that I can do several experiments. So I can then do more experiment in a, in a, in a much shorter time. And, and, and actually that's what uh, the paper you saw was about, was the possibility of then using this, uh, th this technique or using this experimental technique to then repeat over and over and over and over our experiment because all the all the the, the downbursts that we generate in the wind tunnel are in, all imperfect because they are generated using an imperfect technology and so by collecting a, a larger sample and by uh, basically redoing the same analysis where we also what we do we also measure the forces like we everybody does in a standard wind tunnel so we measure the the base forces or the or the or the forces and we can uh, we can analyze uh, we can analyze the, the essentially try to analyze the, the response or try to predict the loads and then try to apply them to the to the to the response of the structure. That so, would also create like a, a better standard because I don't think that two downbursts would be the same. No, so no. If you average yes. them out, then you get a better idea of correct in general. Correct. What it would be. Correct. So yeah, th there are of course you know the, what there are limitations of this approach, which are this is a if it's a 2D downburst, which is uh, in reality the downburst is radial. So you know the, uh, the the then the question is that of course the the 2D versus 3D radial structure depends on the footprint of your object. So if your if your interest is analyzing the downburst over a, a district. Or over over a, a large area, then uh, the 3D effects are going to be important. But uh, if you are interested in a in an object, then uh, then the uh, the, 2D, uh, the is fine. 2D is probably fine. Another thing that we don't do is that, as you can see, the 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 surface here uh, this is actually uh, is uh, uh, is is smooth. 
So uh, we are not able to also replicate some one thing that happens when we have a downburst is that before the downburst hits, sometimes there is already a stationary wind phenomenon behind it. So there is some wind that is coming and because the downburst comes from some sort of meteorological phenomenon. So there might be some, some standard flow, wind of flow of wind. Uh, and so there is the, if you want the combination of these two. And so our, our, uh, our device is not, uh, is partially capable because we, we are trying to generate turbulence by ad adding a grid in, in front of, the, of this uh, device, of our uh, basically device. But uh, it's it's still uh, it's still a two. Uh, 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 it, this grid is uh, from from the point of view of civil engineering application is not the best way you can do this because uh, because usually the, uh, the 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 turbulence in the boundary layer is different as you move uh, far away from the from the friction of the ground and so this is an, again another uh, another another approximation that we are doing. But we saw that this is relatively okay. I'm saying relatively okay speaking. If, uh, especially if our objective is not to study the, the the best model of a downburst, but actually to predict with some degree of uh, accuracy the the loads. Again, by repeating several times the experiment, by repeating the experiment uh, uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, uh, and then by, by try, in a stochastic way, exactly. Trying to, try to essentially capture the, right. uh, capture the, the, the phenomenon. So interestingly enough, this is not the only facility where this kind of uh, technique has been in, implemented. In, uh, in Canada, for example, a, a similar facility uh, uh, has been uh, designed around the same time. And uh, in, the, in Florida, where they have large facilities, very big, like a f uh, for, for, for almost full-scale analysis of hurricane-like winds, uh, you can actually do or re redo or essentially re try to replicate the same type of uh, fairing-like uh, at a much larger scale to then generate a, a downburst at, at a much larger scale, of course. You, uh, one of the issues we have in civil engineering is that the scale matters because sometimes we have objects with very, that are very intricate. So you have a building with uh, maybe some screens that are also architecturally pleasing, and you may be interested in knowing what's the, the what is the surface pressure difference with and without the screen. What is the best uh, gap between the screen and the and the and the and the structure, and so all of this. So. Uh, our scale does not uh, in the wind tunnel does not allow to do that. So you need a much bigger scale, geometric scale, to be able to build a model that can physically have uh, all these little things inside. You can imagine you have to do pressure taps on a, on something which is not a smooth surface, but it's uh, like corners and edges and you know and maybe a small a small screen which is some sort of a flat plate in the in the front. You know, so 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 these are. Uh, uh, these are um, uh, these are all the problems. Of course, the, the the true story is that there are laboratories that have been designed to physically replicate uh, uh, downbursts in a much uh, better way, which is essentially uh, uh, laboratories exploiting the, essentially the principle of a of a, down, a downward impinging jet, so generating essentially an impinging jet. Uh, towards the ground that are uh, are able to do that. Uh, and the main uh, benefit is the radial and direction. The, the main benefit is the radial and also you can control the properties of the downburst in a much better way because then you can essentially control by controlling the uh, the uh, usually what they do uh, the, the the principle was uh, uh, was int int introduced maybe 20 years ago 30 years ago uh, and uh, and uh, and it's it's essentially uh, it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a, a hollow tube or a hollow pipe at the top, yeah. which is then uh, is is lifted up and down. And there, one thing you can actually control is the gap between the the, the ground 
and the and the and the tube. So essentially, when you when you start essentially uh, uh, blowing down air using this uh, using your your fans from the which are now an axial fan with with the with the vertical axis, then uh, controlling that gap is going to control somehow the you know the development of yeah. those uh, ring vortices, and so that has also the the advantage of replicating the if you want the large scale features of the downburst, which we don't which we cannot. And also one thing that we cannot do is uh, uh, the downburst comes with a temporal evolution, which is essentially there is a natural evolution of the downburst. So the intensity also changes over this uh, 20 minute uh, period uh, or duration. So, and so those are uh, much more, uh, they are better, far better. And also if you're interested in, in, in studying flow or Dunbar's flow, this, those are much better because actually you can, if you have PIV methods, then you can also then have snapshot of the of these vortices because there's a there is a primary vortex, but also sometimes then there is a secondary vortex, and uh, and that's the, induced uh, from the. Near the ground, the secondary vortex. Is, is exactly that's in, induced from the ground. And then there's another thing that we cannot do in this phenomena. If you think about the, the ring structure, we looks like a, you know a, with two horns. The two horns, imagine that now it's it's moving along. So then one horn hits you, but then the second horn might hit you, and so we cannot do that. And and because because then you know and and uh, and these these laboratories actually are able to uh, replicate that. So we are uh, we 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 uh, what we do uh, we cheat in our laboratory. And by cheating, what we say we do we do the we do the the we 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 turn on and off our device twice. So in order to somehow try to replicate the the passage of two uh, the yeah. passage of, of two of these uh, of two of these events. In that paper but, that I, I read, you had the uh, it was in Figure Four. You had um, a validation of the rule up event where you had those two peaks. I'm guessing yes. with that method. Yes, the, the two peaks. The two peaks exactly. So usually uh, the two peaks are because the, you 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 get hit by the first the first you know the first uh, the the first vortex the first and then you have the trail the trail vortex coming in you know basically. Okay. So and 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 so we and and we we try to do the that by by using the our device and with the two uh, with the but uh, by doing that twice which is uh, which is not what happens in in reality so so uh, i think this method is 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 a, is a good method if your objective is to collect data that then you can use to design a, 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 a an engineering system with some uh, uh, accounting for a number of uncertainty sources so if uh, if i am if uh, if uh, if I tell the story my story to a fluid dynamicist or to a fluid mechanician, then the fluid mechanician is going to roll up the the, the you know the eyes because he said, "What well, this is nonsense. This is you no. Know, the flow is uh, is completely different. You know. Well, did you look at this? Did you look at that? All the scaling. Or, you know. Of but course. From an engineering you know. point of view, it's but fine. But from because... the from it's from the practical point of view, it's fine. I think in in, in some applications because uh, we are we are often uh, interested in looking at the long term. Uh, you know the long-term effects, and so uh, we. Uh, th this has been an approach that I've taken over time, which is essentially saying, "Oh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, I'm not a very good uh, uh, fluid mechanician, so let me take the approach of the of the of the carpenter." The carpenter who the you know let's do the hammer many times and then by you know by hitting many times maybe, maybe I, I get lucky but you know I, I'm saying I'm saying this is as a it's a joke but it's not a joke in the sense that so I've been trying to say okay let's assume that I have a relatively uh, uh, there are some unknowns so there is some uncertainty in the way I can characterize my my flow field and therefore my loads that are going to generate some something. Uh, and and uh, to to uh, to an engineering system. Then let's account for these uh, of, for these uncertainty sources as best as we can. Let's then try to repeat the the the, the experiments uh, a number of times, and let's I then collect the data and then come up with maybe with a a a, a map or a, or a mapping that uh, accounts for 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 these for these uh, for these uncertainty sources. So this is the this is the approach that I've taken. And, uh, and given the variability of the downburst, there is a good benefit to it. If you just focus on one downburst, then that may not 
apply to other downbursts Correct. in the final Correct. features, so that's okay. Correct. 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 Yes, it, 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 this is actually correctly true because uh, for the longest time, people have, are de have been debating about the, the elevation of, for example, one of the things is the elevation from the ground of the, of the, of the point where this nose-like structure uh, flow, st flow profile reaches the maximum. So in the, in the and so it, that that uh, that elevation varies can vary and it depends also also probably has a and it depends on the on the particular region I'm I'm talking about meteorological region where where you have if you are in a big plain or if you are in a in a in a region like uh, like I was uh, I'm thinking about again the Tyrrhenian Sea where there's a it's it's like a cliffs right from the from the get go from the from the from the coast so you have all these things uh, to to account for and so and and most often uh, uh, those experiments in the in the large laboratories are also very costly because uh, they are they are they are complex laboratories to run and so. The, the, the often uh, you, you cannot you cannot have the whole spectrum of you know you cannot replicate many 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 of them yeah. and, and standard wind tunnels are cheaper and then we can yeah. perhaps try to the best you know but there is always a trade-off you know we uh, I I know that uh, I am making certain uh, tough choices or simplifications but uh, there is a benefit and I have also to account for the for the for the if you want the the errors that I'm making because of the simplified method that I'm using. And so, what's the future work that you have on this topic? If you can talk about it. So the future work is uh, on this topic. So we this project was uh, ended a, about two years ago. Okay. So now we are trying to or one one to two years ago, one year ago more or less. But we uh, so now I'm thinking about uh, how we can. Um, uh, how we can continue uh, the work uh, by uh, uh, by essentially uh, utilizing this this uh, the, the results to to maybe um, uh, produce something that is uh, valuable to a designer because uh, right now uh, the, all of, all of what I, I've been doing is probably not the uh, not the uh, not valuable to designer. And one of the things that is uh, um, uh, that is uh, interesting, uh, or is of interest to the to the engineering community in civil engineering, is the maintenance of structures over a long time, which is essentially what is how to predict the performance of the structures over a long time, and the, in the, within the, the the life cycle of a structure. So say 20, 30 years. Say I have a wind turbine. It's supposed to work for 20 years. Can we predict whether the the the, the structure can uh, withhold the, the the various type of winds, and uh, and for 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 this time? And so the the problem is that uh, we know how to do this. We know how to do this with uh, with the larger synoptic winds because we have the data, we 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 have the models. And, but uh, we don't have the same um, uh, information for 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 downburst, for example, and uh, and, uh, and and so uh, if we, if you are in a climate uh, which is mixed, which may be affected by both phenomena, then maybe it's it's uh, it would be of interest to to somehow to somehow uh, try to uh, consider the mi in mixed climate what the, the the performance of the structure might be, and uh, by performance is. Uh, uh, how damage accumulates over time uh, on, on your on your structure in your structure in certain points of your structure that are crucial, and uh, in uh, in uh, how to to deal with it you know over time over you know 20 30 years and so this is I think the the, the next uh, the next step of the uh, of the research and uh, and uh, um, uh, currently there's a lot of interest also in another wind phenomenon which is tornado. And and because of the so this is another problem that uh, uh, and and so we are also trying to see whether we can use not certainly not the, the experimental facility, but uh, to uh, to to use the same idea of uh, performance over time also applicable to uh, to tornadoes in uh, and and to areas where there could be downburst tornadoes and uh, and but. Uh, no, but it's it, no, it may it's because no, it's well the 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 the, the 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 interesting issue is that the the type of clouds 
that generate a tornado is the same type or this has very similar characteristics as the clouds that are generate a downburst. The issue is how the flow then is, uh, is, uh, uh, is redirected from a, an, a downdraft to a, say, essentially a vortex, a big is vortex. That, so, is that due yeah. to the terrain? Is no, no, no. Uh, it, it's it's due to the it's due to the to the uh, to the usually it's due to the uh, the the characteristics of the of the of the um, uh, essentially the strength of the of the of the of, of, of the clouds and the, because there is as I told you at the beginning there's an updraft yeah. of so it depends on the temperature it depends on another factor so eventually the temperature differential between the the surface and the and the cloud system and 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 so and uh, and so and, uh, and 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 this is also um, and and this is also problematic interestingly. Uh, you know, tornadoes are are much more destructive than thunderstorms, but the 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 uh, they are much more uh, uh, they occur uh, uh, in a uh, they are more so they more seldom occur less seldom occur so they are actually they are very 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 rare if you think and they are also smaller so smaller than a downburst you know so tornado we're talking about hundreds of meters of 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 uh, uh, influence. influence. Yeah. And then versus a, a few kilometers, so you know, so yeah. so there's a there's a difference, and so uh, we actually have some initial uh, results that uh, show that eventually, if you're looking in the longer term, uh, it might not be true. It may not be true that the tornado is more destructive because maybe in 50 years, in 100 years, in a certain region that is tornado prone, you may hit a tornado and your structure is gone. But yeah. maybe if you're designing for 20 years. The downburst is can become more more uh, more uh, crucial for for your design. So depending on the on the on the expected duration of your of your system of your structure, then you may switch or you, you may decide which one is the is the is the controlling phenomenon. So yeah. which makes it interesting, but also challenging. Yeah, that's that's right. So. I guess that will bring us to the end of the podcast. Um, did you want to tell everyone where they can see your papers? You're on ResearchGate or and Google Scholar and, and... yes. So well, I have uh, the, one of the. Uh, so I am on Google Scholar. They can see all the papers. There are other papers in other in other. Yep. Um, uh, but uh, it, uh, one thing they can also do there is the if you see a, a above me, there's the Wind Engineering yep. Research Group is uh, and so there we have a website. And uh, and the, the website, uh, if you if you Google Wind Engineering Research Group uh, Northeastern or W E R G, I think it should uh, in Google you should uh, is or you could they look they can look at my name and yeah. there's the on there's the, the web page of the university then also uh, redirects you to the to the to the to the group web page and the, uh, you can see a number of um, uh, of uh, of papers there a list of papers there so yeah. but google scholar is a good resource so okay. if if you have any other questions or if if uh, your uh, viewers have any other yeah. question i'm happy to uh, to answer i'll so. put um, the links to your google scholar in the description as well so i can access okay. that sure Sure. Thank yes, the, so the Google Scholar is the Google Scholar is better because they cannot they can find the the, the true updated list. We, yep. we we often don't do the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google does it for you. No, Google does it for me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for great. having me to, today. So and uh, and best of luck with your also with your endeavors. You know. Thank the, you.